Welcome home, Rep Pack. Marcus here, and welcome to Comfort Cartoon, the show where I collect absolutely everything from the late 90s, 2000s, all the way to the modern day. And I'm also trying to create the world's biggest SpongeBob and Nickelodeon collection. And I also have a pretty large $20 and under Toy Story collection as well. And if you didn't know, the CEO and founder of this show was actually a winnable prize in Toy Story 4 with Bunny and Ducky at the carnival. But I hope you beautiful people are having an amazing day. And if you guys aren't, you know the drill. Toy Story 4, soon to be 5, camera flip. <laughs> It's about to get a whole lot better. Rep Pack your boy is here. And today, we have a fun little bonus video that we're gonna be doing. And this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time, honestly, and I just haven't had the time to do it. And here it is. We are gonna be opening up all of these right here. So, if you guys don't know, these right here are Toy Story 4 meal toys from McDonald's. I've spent over a year probably trying to get all these different pieces. This is to create a Toy Story 4 RV. So, this is the RV from Toy Story. And with these toys, here, we should be able to build that entire RV and ever since I was very young I've always always loved any of the McDonald's Burger King style toys where you built something I've built in the past the McDonald's inspector gadget another very well-known item here in the collection the Jimmy Neutron rocket was another one of those things we built and this is the one I've been wanting to build for so long I'm a huge Toy Story fan some of my earliest memories of all time involve Toy Story so I this is gonna be just so much fun to get to build this and I wanted to do with you beautiful people and a nice therapeutic chill session trying to go through these putting all the stickers on which I'm sure is gonna be hard and if you don't know me I, I am to almost a level of OCD perfectionist when it comes to putting stickers onto toys it drives me absolutely wild if I get the sticker off even slightly I literally feel like throwing it away I'll deal with it but I, it makes me just want to throw up so, <laughs> so this one involves a lot of stickers so it is gonna be probably a lot of cutting that has to be done during each one but we're gonna check them out talk about the different characters some of the ones that appeared Toy Story 4, but more importantly, let's get into it. So I have a bunch of bags here. We'll just go for them one at a time. I think that there should be like a little list that comes with all of them. So let's just go ahead and start with one and we'll go from there. Let's start with the main man himself. I know he's in here. Let's go with Mr. Woody right here. We're gonna start with him and go from there. Okay, so starting off with Woody here, let's go ahead and get him out of the box here. He's got a lasso there as well too, and he comes, oops, sorry Woody, but it comes with, I guess, this guy right here, which looks like that uh, classic balloon dark darts game that you guys probably played growing up but recently they've gotten rid of the darts we went to the fair and we played that game and the darts were completely gone now they use like a bean bag or something which I, I guess is okay just not the same it doesn't feel the same though but we have sheriff woody right there it looks like he stands right here so you get this card here you put the balloon right there you pull it back and it launches the balloon which it did kind of launch it pretty far actually <laughs> But you know what they do? I've noticed whenever you get these type of toys where it builds something greater, usually they kind of go with a more lazy toy. They don't really go with like anything super unique because they're trying to make it all work into this big overall shape. And they spend so much time on trying to make that shape happen that the toys kind of fall victim to just the lack of resources. <laughs> I've noticed that with all of the buildable toys that I've done in the past. But here is the main event right here for me, the stickers. So you have Slinky in there. You've got Commander Carl along with some of the mini Commander Carls, I believe. This is from 2019. It's literally taken me three years to be able to build this. I don't know why he's Woody as a gavel, but let's go ahead and get these stickers on here and I am gonna try my get best to get them on here perfectly. But Woody is as loyal as they come. I mean, he's been there with Andy. Start of the movie all the way till four when he finally leaves him. But in Toy Story 5, apparently they're supposed to be banding back together. I don't really know how it's gonna work, but I'm excited to see it nonetheless. I love Pixar movies as, as a whole, but the Toy Story movies for me, they never fail. And like I said, Toy Story wouldn't be Toy Story without Woody. So I'm so glad that we started with him first. So I still have my original Woody growing up, the Thinkway 1995 Woody, and I beat that thing to oblivion and somehow he still looks great and I still have the original hat that went with him. Just like in the movie, it somehow always kind of stuck around. And I'll remember in Toy Story 2, we get to meet Al's toy bar and we get to find out that Woody is actually like an extremely rare toy. Like he's a prototype that didn't even get made into mass production like the rest of them did and the show got canceled. They didn't even later down the line make any toys for Woody. So that was like my first like memory of like collecting, I guess. And the fact that some of the toys that I had or toys I was growing up with 
could then later down the line be something that was sought after or something worth displaying, you know? And that was what started my first like real collection was my Buzz Lightyear collection. So I started collecting Buzz Lightyear. I was a space Andy, not a not a Western Andy. Anyway, so we have Woody, we got the stickers on there. Let's go ahead and go to our next character. So I think the best place to start from there is with Buzz. I think it might be easier just to get these all open and then we'll go from there. And I'm gonna have a lot of these extra for sure. I just got all the ones I've been acquiring and I'm gonna go through them. But I think it's gonna be smarter just to wait till we have everything done and then try to build the whole RV because I I'm sure not every piece that I have is immediately gonna connect to the other ones. And it looks like Buzz is like a classic strength tester is where he'd actually, you shoot a little metal ball all the way up to the bell and if you hit the bell, then you know, you, you, you take your girlfriend or somebody, you know, home with a prize. And if you don't hit the bell, then you just regret that you, you know, played that game. But <laughs> I have a lot of jaded, sad experiences at the carnival. I mean, they're fun, but man, I fall victim to those games too much. <laughs> so you put this guy there, you hit the hammer and oh, okay, we get a little bit of a, a little bit of hang time there. All right, Ryan, let's get a slow-mo on that. That was slow-mo and it still was pretty fast. You didn't go that high, but that right there, that moment you saw, that was falling with style. And then let's see here. I hope I didn't lose the stickers doing all this, doing all this. So we have ham there. Ooh, and we actually have, I think the headlights. So we have the headlights, we have the license plate, and we have one of the wheels. Okay, I mean, I think I did a pretty dang good job, all things considered. I give you guys full permission to roast my sticker job at the end of this video, because honestly, I think I did that good that you, you'll have, um, you know, dude, don't do that, I'll cry. I, I redact that, but I, I think I did a really good job, and I tried my best, and I'm happy with it, which is, is good for me, because most of the time when I do this, I'm not, I'm not happy when I do these sticker applications, so that's a big step for me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do the wheel here, our next piece. But in Toy Story 4, they kind of dumb buzz down a little bit. And he he does this thing where he stops following, like for whatever reason, he decides that he has trouble making decisions, which he doesn't seem to in any of the other movies. But in this movie, he's having trouble making decisions. So I think Woody tells him to follow his inner voice. So he starts pressing the buttons on his chest plate and he starts following whatever directions those buttons actually send him toward. For the most part in the movie, it worked out for him and it helped him. But there is one hilarious scene where he, he wants it so badly to say something else, but it just keeps telling him like, no, move out, you know, gotta get out of here, I'll play the clip. Fall back, planet retreat, there's two, go, time to find, exit the back, run out, get out. Retreat. And that's so relatable, you know, like sometimes in life you want something to happen so bad or you want to do something so much, but everything inside of you is telling you no, that's not a good idea, just back away from this, avoid making this decision. And you know, that just because, that, that's part of growing up, I guess, you just, sometimes you make that decision and you're like, oh, okay, I should have, I should have, trusted that instinct. <laughs> All right, so there we have it. We have the ham in the window right there. I think that looks immaculate. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what that word means. And then we've got the wheel there, looking good. Doesn't spin, but the wheel's down there. And then we have the front here with the headlights and also the front license plate as well too. I wish it would have had like a little Toyota logo or something could have put up here, but nonetheless, it still looks amazing. All right, so Buzz, you are done. So who should we do next? Do we do a new character of the series? Should we do Forky? Let's do Jesse. I mean, let's do it in order. So we have the original crew so far here. We probably could find Rex and them in here somewhere too, but the Next character we meet that's like a main role character we have is Jesse here. So she has what looks like some kind of like gymnastic or like self human slingshot rig here. I don't even know what this is, but let's take a look at it closer. I don't know what's going on. You know, that might be the dumbest thing I've ever seen, but we're gonna go ahead and build it anyway. So what she does is that. <laughs> so you put her on these two Super Mario Bros flags and you just do that. That's the the extent of what she does. Like I said, it's some kind of human uh, spine elongating system. I don't know what this is. It, like I said, when these toys can be built into one thing, they, they tend to just the short end of the stick as far as details go. I mean, how fun could be? I mean, maybe because I'm older, but like even as a kid, I'm thinking like, how fun could this be? Maybe for like six and a half seconds. Okay, so she has two stickers, two big ones. So hers is the actual door. You have bullseye and you have the Tri-County RV sticker that you can see right there as well. So we'll be applying those guys and we get to choose between having bullseye in the window 
or having nothing in the window. So it's like, I don't know. Is he like the Jar Jar Binks of like Toy Story to like people? Is there anybody that would be like, oh yeah, I'd rather just have nothing than have Bullseye there. Like, I think I would just go with Bullseye, right? So I'm gonna go with Bullseye. So we're not quite there yet, but we do have Jessie done, and I don't know how she's gonna be uh, added onto the RV with these things, but uh, hopefully it stands out. And hers came with green tickets, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all their tickets and pieces inside of the RV when we're done, so all the bonus pieces will be inside of there with them, along with their manuals. If there's enough room in there, I'm trying to put a lot in this RV. So next up, we have Rex and Trixie, so they have yellow tickets, just same as the ones that Woody had, so nothing really special on those ones, but still cool. And Rex and Trixie, they have, uh, it looks like two stickers, four options. And let's see how this goes together here. Um, <laughs> these are just bad. <laughs> I mean, it's satisfying to an extent, spinning them around. But like, could that, so what this one does is the Rex and Trixie, there's a little popcorn there. You push this button on the back, this little lever, and it, it just kind of spins them around. And that's, that is that. That's the end of that. I mean, it would have been cool if maybe they could have like, I don't know, maybe made it like a yes or no decision decider or something. Like maybe make Rex the no because he's anxious. Trixie the yes because she's so like, you know, ambitious and like, uh, and like open-minded. And then you just like, oh, okay, wherever, whichever character lands the closest to this marker is the yes or no. But I mean, you know, at least I, like I said, you know, they probably, it's McDonald's. They probably aren't giving these toy designers a lot to work with. They're like, hey, make us all this stuff and then make it all fit into an RV. They're like, okay, you get what you get. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame them, <laughs> but this just not really much more than just a little thing that spins and that's okay I guess so we have that let's go ahead and apply those stickers real quick I'm starting to see a trend here. You got pig in the front window. You have prickle pants in the back You got bullseye and slinky on the sides here. Do they just have something against animals like you guys do? Rex and Trixie are in this spinning thing. All the humanoid characters the ones that go on the top of the RV and actually have like little toys. This is a species. This. All you damn it filthy animals, you guys get inside the RV and hide. You look out the window. <laughs> Only the animals are inside the vehicle. Maybe I'm reading into it too much, but you know, what do I do? Okay, and then next up we have Forky, who is a new character in Toy Story 4 exclusively. Um, I'm sure we'll probably see him in Toy Story 5 if he's survived the um, just the fact that he's, you know, like Woody's really well built. Toy Buzz Lightyear, especially well built. They're done by Thinkway, you know, Mattel. They're a solid brand. Bonnie made this with clay and glue. Elmer's glue, I'm sure. The most tastiest of all glues. And I don't think that, you know, he has the build quality to last, you know, three, four films like they did. So, I mean, we'll see. But maybe he won't be in the next one. Maybe he will. I kind of want him to be, though. Maybe they'll give him, like, a more, like, a sturdier body or something. <laughs> but we have the green tickets for his. And let's see what Forky does here. So you hit this side of the ladder. And in theory, you should be able to aim him. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Exposing oneself is not easy, Forky. <laughs> so there we have it, Forky. You're supposed to hit this side of the ladder and it launches them in there. And then you, I, you saw the thing. I'm not, play back the thing. I'm not doing that again. That was painstaking. <laughs> he did not go in easy. I will say that was probably one of the, I'm looking for my stickers. I would say that was probably one of the most creative. I did like that one a little bit. It's funny. It plays into the movie. If you guys don't know, Forky, uh, he believes himself to be a piece of trash. And the same way Buzz Lightyear thought he was a space ranger, Forky thinks he is a disposable fork, so therefore he should be in the trash. Trash? <laughs> no, no, toys. They're all toys. All right, so this ladder is applied as a part of the RV, which is really cool. So let's take a look here and see how we actually get the stickers on there. So we have one humanoid character finally, and Benson is really creepy. And a fun fact is uh, Woody, when he was first, like when they first made the concept for Woody, he was supposed to be kind of like a ventriloquist uh, dummy character. So it's interesting in Toy Story 4, they actually found a way to make that a character in uh, Benson. And I wouldn't say he does, he looks that much unlike Woody, kind of interesting of a, maybe a thought process. That's where that could have come from. So you have those stickers on and we also have Forky's foot sticker on too. So those ones are good to go. 
So next up is the one we literally have one of, and that is Canadian legend, Duke Kaboom. He was the previously owned by a French Canadian named Francois, I believe, and he, he was always trying to impress Francois and to be able to be everything that Francois thought he could be, but you know, he didn't really live up to the expectations of Francois and he ended up kind of getting uh, tossed out. And <laughs> I feel so bad, one of the funniest and also saddest backstories in uh, Toy Story but at least you know like I feel like there had been so many backstories for different toys in the series at this point that you know it would almost be hard to feel in some ways because there's been so many of like Lotso's and you have the prospector who just never you know got used or whatever like there's all these different stories that yeah, it was almost perfect for them to just make one where it's like okay it's sad but it's also like the way the characters playing it out and speaking about the story is just hilarious uh, uh, and a shout out to Keanu Reeves who did an amazing job on him. So we have his ramp here too. So he had a little Canadian flag that we had to apply on the back. And his character, I'm pretty sure, I mean, unless there is some kind of Canadian like uh, stuntsman, I think it's supposed to be based off of the American stuntsman, uh, Evil Knievel. So it's just kind of funny that they made like a Canadian version of him, almost like a knockoff of that in a sense. And then he also doesn't really work that well. But I mean, man with short stature, but big in heart. <laughs> so let's see how he actually works here. This is really, this is my favorite one. I think toy wise. Okay, so you have Duke Kaboom. You can kind of twist him around here. You can adjust his launching pad a tiny bit to kind of see where you want to shoot him. But then all you do is press in the back and it actually launches him up that ramp. It doesn't really work very well because he's too close to the ramp. But you guys can kind of see up close how it works. It just kind of goes straight, actually. If they would have made the ramp a little steeper or maybe had like some kind of pull out like ramp for him to go up, probably would have worked a little better, but you know, I'll give it points for the creativity. And the fact that they made the ramp actually like a little ski ball uh, shoot there, which is, you know, does typically have a little bit of a, a lift there at the end. So I like it. We have to be getting close. I mean, this is another set of wheels here. So let's get this on. We have wheels and a Toy Story 4 sticker to put on in this one. We, this, these stickers were crunched up too, but we only have one of Duke Kaboom. He was the hardest one to find for whatever reason. All right, so we got the Toy Story 4 and wheel sticker on there. So that one is done. Duke Kaboom is good to go. Next one up, let's check it out. We have Ducky and also we have Bunny, which this one is pretty cool. Basically you spin it and then whatever number it lands on, you adjust just the, your little squirrel here to that number and whoever gets to the end kind of it basically wins that one a little bit of a, a game I mean you could actually play this in the car with your brother or sister and then that's unique I kind of like that one at least it's got something to it rather than like oh they spin <laughs> and Ducky and Bunny of course they're voiced by uh, Key and Jordan Peele who hasn't dude Jordan Peele has another movie that takes place it will starts at least at a carnival much darker but um, you know it also has that so <laughs> told you nobody wins those prizes she was she would rather go get abducted and get replaced with another version of herself in the movie Us then sit there and watch her dad try to win those prizes. She know he ain't gonna win. Okay, so next up we have Gabby Gabby here. The main, I guess you'd say villain. Ah, mine's got like a freaking, looks like I got freaking ran over or something or went through Toy Story 4's like garbage system. Let's see if we have another one. That one's rough. Okay, I have another one, thankfully. But Gabby Gabby is the main villain in this movie and her whole thing here is basically like a teacup. So the wheel actually on hers works and it spins Gabby Gabby around in a uh, Alice in Wonderland style, you know, ride system, which is pretty sweet. And Gabby Gabby is a, a villain that you kind of start to love towards the end of the movie. Kind of feel bad for her at the end because she just wants to have an owner so bad but the whole start of the movie she's trying to steal Woody's voice box but she just don't mess with Woody man I mean he ended up giving her the voice box just because that's the kind of guy Woody is but I don't know do you forgive Gabby for doing that or you think she's just the worst you know she's a lot more likable than like Lotso or the, or the prospector though who are just kind of jerks you know real real donkeys you know those guys are terrible so of those two I mean she's kind of one of the more likable all right so boom we have those on we have the wheel on solid there they're on their solid pretty confident with that one and Gabby Gabby goes to the side here we're getting close to the end here guys all right the so next up we have my favorites in here two of like just some of the most adorable characters ever we have the aliens and how these guys work is you push one down the other one pops up not a super like you know unique fun toy really and it's not even randomized it's always in the same order those two go down 
this one goes up, that one goes down, those two go up, and you do that for six seconds, like I said. I mean, I'm giving this a little bit more than the last one. Like six seconds, and then you're done with it. But ultimately, that is what's going on there. <laughs> it's pretty much the end of it. But I do just love the displayability of it. It's really cool. It kind of has like this little, like a whack-a-mole, but whack-a-alien type of game going on there. Pretty straightforward on this one, but this one, dang, this one has the most stickers. We have Dolly on there, the pea pods, the top window, and also the main windshield as well. So this one is of, of the most importance probably of all of them. So let's go ahead and get this right. Okay, we'll start with the windshield, get the big one out the way. Whew, okay, so we got the windshield on there really well. That, that was not an easy one, so I'm surprised that we got it on there good. Now we have the top window, let's do it. So the top windshield did not go as, as perfectly as I would have thought or liked it to go, but we did get it on there and I'm hoping, you know, I'll be able to find another one of these in our in our stock and be able to re reapply that particular window, but I'm just gonna power through and get the rest of it done here. Okay, so I have the dolly sticker on there. We have the pea pods. I have the windshield, but you will notice there is a small tear in that top window up there. I had to readjust it, and as I readjust it, it tore the sticker. Ugh. You, when you apply this many stickers, you know, you don't you don't expect to be the same man after as you were when you entered into it. This this just takes a level of, of focus and, and irritation that most people aren't capable of. And I, I'm, I'm not one of them. I just try my best and this is this kills me. But at the same time, it doesn't look too bad. You really can't notice it too much. It's a small thing. And I'm pretty sure somewhere around here, I have another one of the alien ones. So what I'll do is reapply that sticker for right now. That is solid. Let's check it out here. So that was for the aliens. Our last one though is Bo Peep. So of course, you know, Bo Peep, we saw her in Toy Story 1, Toy Story 2, and then we don't, or well, I don't even know if we see her in Toy Story 2, but I think we do. Maybe just Toy Story 1, and then she reappears in Toy Story 4. She was referenced in Toy Story 3 as being like a toy they lost along the way, but then reappears, and you find out that, you know, she did go from owner to owner to owner, you know, different pieces, like her arm breaking off, and, you know, she just decided, I'm done with this, I'm gonna be my own toy, my own person, and go out there and just live my life, and she ends up becoming a playground toy where she used to play, and then she also, at the end of the day, gets to go home and do her own thing which, you know, the shout out to her. I mean, like, I think if toys really were sentient and they had like all these feelings and emotions and people knew that, they probably would have a lot more rights and like, you know, healthcare and different situations and different things to kind of help them out. But because they all hide and keep people ignorant of their existence and them being uh, sentient beings, they don't get really treated like anything other than just objects. And I mean, obviously there's Pixar rules, I guess, as to why that is, but you know, that's, that's why they get treated the way they do, unfortunately. It's sad, but she decided to, uh, you know, live her own way and not live by those rules and just have her own life, which I respect. So for hers, I'm not even going to set this up, though, just because I'd rather just keep these pieces together. You put these jugs right here, you fold the bottom piece up, you put them in a little row, and then she would smack all those guys down just like that. So we'll put Buzz here for this example, because I feel like in some ways that's what she did to him in the movie. So let's go ahead and boom, there we go. So we have Bo Peep there. She's got some pieces as well too, including her friend. Well, I cannot remember the name off the top of my head right now. A wheel and also the Toy Story sign. This is our last piece, guys, and we could build this entire RV. I am hyped for it. Okay, so there we have it, the final Toy Story piece, and we have Bo Peep there as well. So now that we have all of the characters done, we can finally build this thing and make it one whole unit, which is the thing I've been looking forward to pretty much the entire time. The best part, it's like you're building up all these resources, gathering your logs, gathering your nails, your screws, your screwdrivers, all your equipment, but now you get to actually put some stuff together. So let's make this happen. We got all our pieces there, we got all of our tickets. A lot of dang tickets. All right, so cleaned up our area. Now let's go ahead and assemble this guy. All right. 
right, so there we have it. The RV is complete. And I mean, the back leaves a little bit to be desired. I mean, I guess it's like the back of the RV, but like, I mean, I could have added some stickers or something to make the back window look a little bit more complete. But I mean, most of the time you're gonna be displaying, it, you're gonna be putting it forward anyway. So I guess they just left it like that. But this is what I'm talking about. I love toys like this so much because it kind of, you know, takes these two really cheap, like 50 cents dollar toys and puts them all together and gives you something that's like, I don't know, like a 10 or $15 toy. It's <laughs> something that would cost a little bit more to get. And they're free. They go through Happy Meals. So if you manage to end up going there on your lunch enough times or family goes there enough and you collect the whole set, you can make something pretty premium and a little nice uh, souvenir of the time period and the film itself. Like, this is cool and I feel way more connected to the Toy Story 4 film having built this and the experience in itself was awesome. And, and I love that I got to do this and I can't wait to add this on the Toy Story shelf as the full RV but there's also some spaces I noticed here on top to now add the characters onto the top of the RV as well so let's do that Okay, so after a painful, painful process of trying to get everything together, we have it. So we have Jessie, she's kind of flying back with the wind of the road carrying her. We have Buzz, we have Woody on there. We have Bo Peep right behind Woody's shoulder, which I love that. It's kind of to give them a little bit of like a, a flirtatious positioning. You have Gabby Gabby there, and you also have Forky right behind her, almost ready to just yeet himself out of the car onto the road and into traffic. And then I wondered why the back was so bare, but there's actually a really creative spot right here where the screw point on Duke Kaboom actually goes in and slides his wheels right into this position here so it covers up a lot of the back here with Duke Kaboom. And if you look at it from the front and in the instructions, there's nowhere that actually tells you that that's where Duke Kaboom goes. You kind of have to just figure that out. And then of course the characters that are left out, you can see them within the windows. So amazing. I'm super proud of this guy and I love the product so much obviously proportionately they don't make a lot of sense with the RV but I think it's just to kind of give you like a little bit of a statuette which I think is incredible I mean when they do these toys they just have to make some generic toys that do something and it gets the advertising the brands are looking for but when they connect like this it makes me in particular I won't speak for everybody but it makes me really happy it makes me want to build them and put them all together and really want to get every single one because you get to get this kind of premium experience and not everybody who picks up one of these toys is gonna get was it difficult was it painstaking at many points? Oh, absolutely. But was it worth it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> Duke of Boom keeps falling, but other than that, I would say it's all worth it. So I'm happy with this guy. I'm excited to add to the Toy Story shelf. And, uh, you know, I can say that I was a part of this Toy Story 4 buildable toy line. And, you know, whatever they do for Toy Story 5, I look forward to it. And I hope it's something buildable. That would be cool because then I can do one of these videos hanging out with you guys again and building a random toy. <laughs> Okay, so for the Toy Story RV, we have it in here with the rest of the collection and a new member that you may have not seen yet, but he is adorable. <laughs> you know how much every single item on this shelf cost, Mitchell? Roughly one to nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, absolutely. Under twenty. <laughs> under twenty dollars. Everything you see here individually was under twenty dollars, including the big box characters you see in the background there. Uh, absolutely has been a wonderful time collecting all these pieces. So you guys can see we're kill still growing it. Always a little bit of an investment to show you guys that we can you can collect as much as you want for under a twenty dollar budget per item. And socks is no different. He was ten percent of that at two dollars. So we got to add socks in here with the crew. I put them right next to Buzz Lightyear. I think he looks perfect there. And you know, very soon we'll be updating this Toy Story collection as well too. And like I said, just I keep saying it. Every time we add new stuff to here, it gets harder and harder to. Kind of fit in space but we are adding some shells but even after that i don't know how long we're gonna keep growing this some of the items i definitely am gonna keep for the long term but some of the items like i said it's really just about the channel and seeing how big we can make this for that 20 dollars budget and maybe we'll switch it up maybe we'll end up doing a different series for that 20 dollars budget at the next collection i don't know the new year's coming up so maybe we'll have to switch that up but if not we'll be continuing this on for the next year as well but i don't know it's tough you know
I know. Because it's just getting so big and we're going to be changing the shelves up here to add Disney stuff and stuff like that. And do we continue the Disney aspect with adding the Toy Story stuff on there or do we just go full Disney and kind of, you know, add up whatever we want in here and keep only the Toy Story stuff that's really necessary. But for now, this is just a little monument of what you can do for under $20. I'm loving this collection for what it is and, you know, socks, I think socks will be there for long term though. <laughs> Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is like a chill bonus video. Um, I, it was just, you know, the core of this channel is just doing the things that I want to do and the things that I love. And that's something that I didn't get to do. And I've been just so busy doing so many different things. You know, life gets you caught up so much that you don't get time to sit there sometimes and just build a random toy or, you know, set something up you've been wanting to for a while. And I genuinely had so much fun setting that entire thing up. So I hope you guys enjoyed doing it with me. Relaxing and setting it up one step at a time. It was so cool getting to relive that experience of like building a uh, build a toy with multiple different pieces, especially around a franchise that I love and hold so dearly. So I'm glad that I finally got the time to finally, you know, set it down, relax and build that thing and being able to do it with you guys was just an extra bonus. So thank you so much for being here for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, you can hit the like button, subscribe so you guys don't miss any of the other videos we do over here. If you guys want to go check out the Patreon, that'll be down below. And and if you guys want to see more videos like this, just random pop-up bonus or maybe normal upload day like uh, vlog style, I guess. I don't know whatever you call this video. It was a lot of fun though. If you want to see more of this, <laughs> then let me know in the comments down below. Again, we're on Whatnot every single Friday. You guys can go check that out. Buying, selling, collecting platform. You get 15 bucks when you sign up. Go check it out if you haven't already. You, 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 know, you know the drill probably by this point. You know, if you're watching this video, you probably know <laughs> about Whatnot. So if you're not over there already, then you're still thinking about it go check it out helps on the channel i'll see you guys in this video right here that i know you're gonna love and as always rep pack i will see you beautiful people in the next video adios and bloop